Hey, it's Grace here on Books and Cooks. Just coming to you today with a little chatty check-in video um, for Women in Translation Month. I'm coming to you from a slightly different angle because my one of my cats is sleeping on the couch next to me and I don't want to disturb him. He's so sweet right now. So hopefully he will stay sweet and we can do this chatty video. Um, so yeah, it's about, it's a little over halfway through the month. I think today it's the 18th of August. So a couple days over halfway through the month. And um, I've been trying to do some Women in Translation Month reading throughout the month, um, but I've had a little bit of a struggle with it. And so I wanted to update you all on what I have successfully completed, a little bit about what I thought of that, and um, what, things that I tried to read that I, didn't work out for me or that I didn't complete. And then um, just a little chat about why I think that might be and um, maybe see if anyone else has some ideas or recommendations that they could share in the comments um, as well. So hopefully this will be fun for people to watch. Um, so what have I read so far this month? So actually the first book I read this month and completed was a book in translation. Um, I finished up Earth Eater by Dolores Reyes, which was translated from Spanish by Julia Sanchez. And I really liked this book. So Earth Eater was a great way to start out the month. Um, I would say some content warnings for a little bit heavier topics for sure in this book. Um, it follows a young woman who's the protagonist of the story and um, early on in the story she finds out that if she eats dirt from specific areas related to missing women or missing persons um, then she has visions about like where they went missing or what happened to them. And so um, it, it's basically, you know, some type of magic. That's the way it's kind of treated in the story. And because of that, it has a mixed response from people in the region, in the area. Some people come to her for assistance and help finding um, women or other people, children in their families or people in their families who have disappeared um, or who they think may, be, may have been harmed. Um, and so she is asked for assistance and she's some often paid to do that. But at the same time, um, she's kind of treated like a bit of a, a social pariah and she struggles to sort of you know, figure out her place in all of this. She's a young woman living with her older brother and um, dealing with their own trauma as well because her mother, it's established at the very beginning of the story, was killed by her father. Um, and so they're, they are dealing with that, essentially. Um, this book is a really, I think I thought it was very thought-provoking. I would say it is horrific in content but it doesn't really reach the point of being um a horror book in the sense that there's a lot of scary moments necessarily or like ghosts or horrific creatures or things like that so it's not your more of your traditional horror um but there there's more of a I would say maybe a domestic horror element to it and um dealing with violence towards women um, missing women and children, um, the abuse and violence that can come about from just, you know, generally like people being exploited in general and um, sort of the impacts of colonialism and things like that on populations and also the impacts of drugs and addiction to an extent as well. Um, and there's also some commentary on the police and you know whether they are helpful or harmful when it comes to handling violence. Um, so I thought that this book was really well done. It's short. It was very impactful to me. Um, I enjoyed it a lot and I would definitely read more in translation from this author. That was great. So then I went on to um, try to pick up Dark Constellations by Pola Oloishirak. I think that I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, translated from Spanish by Roy Kesey. And this book I picked up on audio from my library through Hoopla. 
and I was trying to listen to this on audio and I could not get into the story on audio. It's just, there was a lot going on. There's time skips. Some of it was more historical fiction in nature. Um, and then some of it, it seems to be speculative in nature. And so I'm still interested in this book, but I could just tell right away that I wasn't going to be able to follow it on audio. And so I decided to return that to my library and not continue with that book at this time until I can get a physical copy to read um, because it was just too complex for me to follow that way, honestly. Um, so that was, you know, that was a, a bit of a bummer. And then I went on to pick up, I, I decided at that point I needed something kind of light as like a palette cleanser, hopefully. So um, I found a volume of manga called Breath of Flowers, volume one by Kaylee, translated from French by Rob Aft. So the artist um, and the, the author of this manga is a French woman. And um, I haven't had a lot of experience reading manga. This is like one of my first times really picking it up to read. And unfortunately, I was not super impressed with this novel particularly. Um, I found it a little bit disappointing. And I don't know if that's fair because I do think the way that it's like subcategorized in manga is probably just not exactly what I should have picked up in in manga. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, basically, it's a story of two teenagers who end up in a relationship. Um, it's very insta-lovey, I would say. They end up together basically, you know, at the very beginning of the story. And then um, it's kind of talking about their relationship. And the twist um, of, of the manga is that one of the two teenagers is um, presenting as male at school, but um, is at least assigned female at birth. And the other teenager is a girl who um, at the very beginning of the story basically expresses that she can't imagine any type of same sex or same gender relationship uh, romantically and then realizes she's had a crush on this guy who um, has been presenting as male publicly at their school right but is actually a, a woman and that's revealed at the very beginning of the story so um they start dating each other and kind of things ensue from there uh things that that I didn't like about the story so first of all you know insta love is not my favorite especially with high school I just I'm not a huge fan of high school relationships so again like I should have probably known picking this up that it wasn't going to be exactly for me but I was kind of thinking it would be maybe like heart stopper um kind of style story but in manga form I was expecting there to be drama and jealousy and kind of like a lot of stuff going on because that seems to be fairly normal for the genre. Um, so that didn't really bother me too much, but there was quite a lot of that. I think the thing that made me really dislike this manga at the end of the day was the way it discussed same gender relationships and gender in general. Um, there's no real, at least in the translation, there's no discussion of trans people or non-binary people and the sort of like the questioning that might go on for someone who has chosen to present as male in school and is struggling with their identity and um, specifically like their gender identity and right and so that that's not something that's discussed at all and I thought that was a like a major failing of this story and a missing component and again that might just be the translation but that was my own issue with it um, that way so I don't think I'll be continuing on with that manga series. Then I saw that someone had recommended, I think it was Sunny at a Sunny Book Nook, ha had recommended or had mentioned that um, they would be picking up Minor Detail by Adania Shibley, which is translated from Arabic by Elizabeth Jaquette. And this book was also available to me on audiobook. And it was very short. It's like four hour audiobook, a little bit under four hours. So I figured I would pick that up 
this past weekend and listen to it when I was driving to and from uh, a visit to my grandmother's house because I can, can knock out at least usually an hour and a half to two hours um, on audiobook that way. So I did, that's exactly what I did. I picked it up from Hoopla again on audiobook um, and started listening to it in the car. And this book is written by a Palestinian author and it is a commentary on um, Israeli-Palestinian like relationship and, and interaction related to the occupation of Palestine by Israel. Um, and it starts with the 1949 war and then apparently there's also a time jump, but I didn't get there because I DNF'd this at about the halfway mark. Um, and it was for a few reasons. So one was that um, the, the story just wasn't really capturing me in general. And I don't know, again, if this was listening to it on audiobook versus reading it, but I felt like there was a lot of like nothing really going on in the story and I I wasn't picking up on what the author was trying to do and so it wasn't an enjoyable experience for me. That's not to say that the author wasn't doing anything because this book has had rave reviews, people have loved it. I just wasn't picking up what they were putting down basically, at least in this format. And then close to about the halfway point where I stopped listening, a quite um, traumatic event happens to a woman in the story and um, I just I just didn't like the way that that felt in the story. Um, I don't think that it was necessarily done poorly but it just bothered me personally and so I decided I was going to put that down because I was starting to get you know feeling kind of depressed <laughs> listening to it honestly and it is a depressing subject obviously, and it's meant to be a discussion of violence and um, occupation, right? And things like that. So I think that it wasn't the book's fault that I had trouble with it. It was, I picked it up at the wrong time probably to, to get what I needed to out of it. What I'm reading right now, one of the things that I'm reading are the poems of Sappho translated from ancient Greek by John Maxwell Edmonds. And I'm about 70% through um, this poetry, these poetry fragments, basically, that we have from Sappho. Um, and they're interesting. It's fun. It's a nice, you know, break in pace. I always like to read poetry if I'm sort of trying to break up some of the things that I'm reading. And um, I'm enjoying it. I think that it's really interesting. I do think it's interesting to read ancient trans ancient uh, books or, or literature or poetry in translation to English especially older translations because the poetry is so flowery and a lot of it, a lot of the translations feel so anglicized that I kind of question whether it's a, a very accurate translation. And so um, I might dig around and see if Jean from Jean Bookish Thoughts has any videos about that because I know she um, is a classics historian and she has her PhD in classics and so she has a lot of videos about that kind of thing and like ancient translation and so I'm interested to see if she talks about any of that because that's something that I'm kind of picking up on in this translation is that it feels very anglicized and almost like very stylized for I would say like the 20th century or the 19th century for poetry so um that kind of reads weirdly to me but again like a translation is supposed to probably meet the audience that you're trying to meet so again that might make sense um for when this translation was published so that's kind of my that's the check-in piece of things so i wanted to also chat a little bit about why i think some of these books worked for me and why other ones have not um, because I am trying to figure out, I'm using this month to try to figure out how can I add more translated works into my reading diet um, and experience more of that in a way that is still entertaining for me because reading is something that I primarily do for entertainment, also for education, um, but you know, it's, it's mostly for entertainment, it's mostly a hobby of mine. Um, and I want to figure out how to incorporate it in a way that sort of works with the rest of my reading. 
So when I was kind of thinking about the books that worked for me and the books that didn't, um, really Earth Eater is the book that worked best for me. And um, then the poems of Sappho have worked for me as well. Um, but the other three books that I either finished or tried to read didn't work very well for me. And I think part of that is that in general, I just don't read a lot of literary fiction anymore. So for many of my formative reading years, I read literary fiction and classics and things of that nature. Um, and then during college, I didn't read for fun really much at all except in the summertime. And during the summertime, I read quite a lot of literary fiction and then, you know, a mix of other genres as well. But during the school year, I read a ton and almost all of it was nonfiction. I did not do majors for undergraduate or graduate school that really allowed me to focus on fiction work specifically. I didn't really take, I think I took one English class <laughs> the entire time I was in college. Um, and everything else that I took was really focused on reading nonfiction and nonfiction texts. So I got really into that. I learned how to read it in ways that I find fun now, right? Um, kind of been like trained on how to read it. So I enjoy reading nonfiction. And then since leaving college, I sort of had to relearn how to read for fun um, afterwards. And part of that relearning process has been exploring genres that I didn't really engage with when I was younger. So um, things that I read a lot of now are horror and romance and um, some mysteries. And I do read quite a bit of poetry. I read some science fiction. I read quite a lot of genre fiction in general. And I think one of the things I, have found as I've been trying to look for books by women in translation that I would be interested in is that just in general, most of it is literary fiction. And I'm not finding a lot of translated works that are genre fiction, um, you know, romance, horror, sci-fi, what have you. So just the things that make up my re reading diet are not very well represented, it seems like in English. Um, from what I could find. And so this is based on my Googling of lists of women in translation, looking at different websites for this, different review sites and blogs, um, looking at some booktube videos as well that are that kind of use the tag women in translation. Um, I have found that there's some primarily like mystery or thriller books that seem to get translated, um, especially in like Northern European languages uh, or from Japan, that kind of those two, two areas. It seems like we get quite a few mysteries or, or thriller books that kind of come out of those areas. So I may pick up something like that in the future. Um, I know like Helene Turston, I think, is an author who has written a number of different mysteries that have been translated into English. I'm pretty, pretty sure that she is a Swedish author, but I am not 100% on that. Um, and then there's some, like, I think it's Banana Yoshimoto, um, who has written some, like, horror thriller type books in Japanese, and those have been translated. So those are things I'd be interested in picking up. Um, because, you know, I do read some things like that, but really I would love to be able to read some science fiction, some romance, even like historical fiction, um, things that are not heavy literary fiction. This year when I actually looked at my Goodreads to see how much literary fiction I had read in total, I've read 91 books this year and I've read about five books that are just straight literary fiction. So clearly it's a very small piece of my reading diet right now. And so to try to kind of make myself read a bunch of literary fiction in one month um, that's also been translated was probably not going to work very well. So I am, I think I'm going to change my strategy and start looking to see if I can find genre fiction, um, graphic novels, historical fiction, just different things that are not sort of um, highbrow literary fiction 
to read in translation. Um, and I would love to hear if other people have thoughts about like recommendations of where I could find these things. If you have videos of your own you've made where you have recommendations for this, please let me know because this is something that I want to just continue beyond this month and see how it can impact my reading. I hope you have a good one.